hello guys welcome back to my channel so if you haven't subscribed my channel please go and click the subscribe button so you can get more videos about console simulation so in today's video i will give you a brief introduction about console multi-physics software and what sort of problems we can solve with this software and also i will explain the workflow of this software like what steps you need to take to solve the problem so let's start with the video so the first question is what is console multi-physics so console multi-physics is a numerical tool based on finite element method and it is used to solve different science and engineering problems so the next question is what sort of problems we can solve with this software so it has multiple capabilities so it has different modules so for example it has electrical module in which you can solve ac dc problem radio frequency problems mems plasma and electromagnetic field problems also it has capability to solve different mechanical problems like heat and mass transfer structure problems geomechanics problem fatigue analysis and acoustics and also it has capability to deal with fluid problems like computational fluid dynamics problems in laminar and turbulence regime and it also has capability to deal with microfluidic problems subsurface flows and pipe flows moreover it has capability to deal with different chemical problems uh, like uh, it can solve the chemical reactions and you can also design the battery and fuel cells electro deposition and corrosion this software is also used for multipurpose, like optimization of your problem, and it also has a built in material library. And if you want to design your own material, you can also build your customized material in this software. Also, it has capability to trace the particles flowing in the fluid. So, for that purpose, they have different modules like particle tracing. And finally, the amazing feature is that it has a capability to interface with different softwares. Like you can design your geometry in SOLIDWORKS, AutoCAD, SpaceClaim, Creo, Solid Edge, CATIA, or Pro Engineer. So you can design your geometry 2D or 3D, and then you can import your geometry into console. And it also has capability to interface with MATLAB, and you can export your data in the Excel format. So the next part is what is the workflow of this software? So there are seven different steps you need to take sequentially to solve the problem. So before going into these steps, it is very important that you have your problem statement, like what you are going to solve in this software. So once you define your problem statement, so the first step in this software is to build the geometry. You can build a two dimensional or three dimensional geometry within this software, or you can build your own geometry in different design software, and then you can import into console. So I have example here, you can see here, we have 2D or 3D geometries. So you can build the geometry. So the first step is to build your geometry so the second step is material assignment and defining the physics so in the material assignment uh, console have two options you can assign the material from the built-in libraries or you can define your own material so when it comes to physics it really depends on the problem definition so based on your problem like what you are trying to solve based on that you need to select the physics so the question is what is physics physics is basically a set of equations that you use to solve the problem so here you can see the different type of physics you can use in console multiphysics. The first one you can see the ACDC, then acoustics, chemical, species transport, electrochemistry, fluid flow, heat transfer, optics, plasma, radio frequency, semiconductor, and structure mechanics. So you can solve different sort of problems using console multiphysics. So once you are done with the material assignment and physics, step number three is boundary condition. So you need to define the boundary condition of your problem. So let's say if you are simulating fluid flow through a pipe, so you need to define the inlet and outlet boundary condition, like in what, what will be the inlet velocity and outlet pressure or velocity. And also you need to define the no-slip wall boundary condition on the surface of the pipe. Or if you are dealing with cantilever beam problem, so you need to define the fixed end and the other end where you're applying the load. So boundary condition is the third step and it's really important. So if you fully define your problem, then you can move to the step number four which is meshing. So meshing is basically discretization of your geometry into small pieces called elements. So what you do basically you discretize your whole geometry into smaller number of elements. So in a moment when I will solve the problem, I will show you how you can do this mesh. So in console, basically there are two ways you can do a physics control mesh or you can define your own mesh. So in the coming tutorial, I will show you how you can generate the mesh in using console multiphysics. So as example, I have attached an image here. You can see a two dimensional microfluidic channel I made in step number one. So we discretize the whole domain into small number of elements. So once you're done with the step number four, which is meshing, then you can move forward to the step number five, which is defining the study type. 
So in COMSOL, you have different options like stage three study, time dependent study, or frequency driven study. So if you are dealing with EM waves, so it is very important step to define the appropriate study according to the physics you have selected. So after the study step, the step number six is the solver configuration. So in COMSOL, you have different configurations. The most common configurations are segregated or fully coupled. So COMSOL automatically select the solver configuration appropriate to the, your problem. So after the solver configuration, you just need to click the compute button and it will solve the problem. So once the problem is solved, you need to post process the data. For post processing, we have different options in COMSOL like 3D plots, 2D surfaces, graphs. So you can make line graphs using this software. Also, it has capability to plot the streamline. In this case, you can see the air is flowing over our man. So you can see the lines, the, these lines represent the airflow. The next one is a contour, so you can also plot the contours. And this software has also capability to plot the trajectories of the particles in the fluid. And the final and amazing feature is the animation. You can generate animation using this software, and then you can export your animation into GIF, MP4, or AVI format. So that's all about the steps required to solve a problem in COMSOL Multiphysics. So let's dive into the software, and I'll show you all these steps. So before implementing those seven steps, uh, the most important thing is the problem definition. So this time I plan to make it simple and I will solve a two dimensional cantilever beam problem. When you open the console software, so you get this interface. So you have two options here. So the first one is model wizard and the second one is blank model. So if you click on model wizard, so you have different six options. These six options are basically the space dimensions. So you can start with the zero dimensional 1D, 1D axisymmetry, 2D, 2D axisymmetry or 3D problem. So I will not use this one and I will use the other option, uh, which is blank model. And I will start from the scratch. So I can, I, I'll go here and click cancel. And then I will click on blank model. So when you click on blank model, so this is the main interface of COMSOL. On the left hand side, it is model builder. So all the seven steps we will apply. So you will see here all those steps we will apply. So for each step, you can see we have different options for the settings for each step. So the next one is the graphic window. So in this window, you can see your geometry mesh and all the results you can see in this area. So, and also if you go here, you have multiple options. So I will quickly go over each option and we'll show you that what we can do uh, using these options. So before moving forward, uh, first we need to define the space dimension for, for this problem. So I'm going to solve the two dimensional problem. So click on the add component and I will click on 2D. So once I click the two dimensional, you can see here uh, the two dimensional component has been added into my model builder. So now we will start our seven step formula. So the first step is to define the geometry. So in this case, I'm going to define a rectangle. So to define the rectangle, you can right click on the geometry and here you have option of rectangle. Or otherwise you can go to the geometry and you have multiple options here so you can see rectangle option is also here so if you click the rectangle option so you can see here for the rectangle in the setting section we have different options so the first option is the type of rectangle we want to draw it can be solid or a curve and then you can define the size and then base position if you want to rotate the rectangle you can give the rotation angle here in degrees so i will keep it simple so i will give the value of, or to the width 10 and height one. So once you define the dimension, just click on build all objects and everything is built. So you can see here we have built uh, a two dimensional rectangle. So once you are done, click to the geometry and then click build all. So the step number one is done. The next step is to define the material and physics. So for the material, I already mentioned that we have two options in console. One is uh, we can import the material from library, built-in libraries. And the other option is we can define our own material. So for this problem, I'm going to select the material from the library. So right click on material and click on add material from library. And you can click, you can click here and search the material you want. Let's say I want to search the steel. So I can write, write steel and then you can click search and you will have multiple options of different steels so you can see here we have different options for the steel so i'm going to select this bs 460b uh, steel reinforcing bar in the solid format so i will double click on this material and you can see here the material has been added 
So go and click the cross button. And you can see here the material has been added and uh, the material has been assigned to the geometry we designed. And below here, you can see all the properties already assigned to this material. So once you are done with the material, the, the next step was to select, select the physics. And I'll go to the physics and I'll click on add physics. So once you click on add physics, you have multiple options here. So uh, in this case, we are going to solve a structural mechanics problem. So I will click on structural mechanics and then I can click on solid mechanics. And you can see here the solid mechanics physics has been added into the model builder. So pro click the cross. So after the material assignment and selection of appropriate physics, step number three was to select the boundary conditions. So before applying the bonding conditions, I just want to show you the different settings of this physics. So if you click here, you can go and see different settings, solid mechanics module. So if you can click here, you can see we are considering this material as linear elastic material. And if you go here and you can see like, so you can see the properties of the linear elastic material. So we are considering this solid as isotropic material. We're considering young modulus and poison tissue model, and we are all the properties are given from the material. So you can define your own user defined properties, or if you select from material, so this will take all the properties assigned in the material tab. So in the free constant, you don't need to do anything, and also for the initial values. Now we will apply the step number three, which was the boundary conditions. In this case, we are going to fix this end. So we need fixed boundary condition and we want to apply a load on the boundary right click and then go to the boundary load so for the fixed constraint so we will select this boundary so you can see here in the selection we have different options we can select the boundaries manually or we can select all the boundaries so i will select the boundary manually so i will come and click here this one so you, you can see here the number one boundary has been selected and we are considering this boundary as a fixed constraint so for the boundary load, we also have to select the boundary. So in this case, again, we have the same options, manual uh, selection of the boundaries, or we can select all the boundaries. So I will come and click here. This boundary, we want to apply the load. And this is asking about the type of force we want to apply. So we don't want to apply force per unit area. Instead, we want to apply total force. So we want to apply the force in the negative y direction. So I will say minus five Newton. So the step number three is done and now we will move forward to step number four which was meshing so i mentioned that meshing is basically discretization of the whole domain into small components small pieces so if you come here i told you we have two options in the console the first one is the physics control mesh or you can define your own user control mesh so to keep it simple i will select physics control mesh and if you come to element size, we have different options starting from extremely coarse. If you click on extremely coarse and then build all, you can see it's very coarse mesh, meaning this meaning the size of element is very big. So if you come and click normal, so you can see the element size has been reduced. And if you come and click the finer, so you can see uh, the size of the element has been reduced further. So this is the range uh, to select the size of the element. So if you select coarser, the bigger element size and if you go to the other end of extremely fine the element size will be much finer or much lower so for this problem we want to keep it extra fine we are done with the step number four the step number five is to select the appropriate study type so for that purpose we will go and click on the study tab and then click add study so in this case we have different options so uh, to make it simple i will only select the stationary study I will double click and you can see the study step has been added into the model builder. Click here to close the add study tab. And you can see here uh, for this stationary study, we are solving this uh, physics interface, solid mechanics. So the step number six is to define the solver configuration. So normally COMSOL takes the appropriate solver configuration by itself. So otherwise you can define your own solver configuration. So if and if you right click on study and go to the show default solver so it will show us the default solver configuration and if you click on solution you can see here the different settings so i will not go into detail once you're done with the step number six you can simply click on study and you can compute the problem So now the problem has been solved and if you click on the study one you can see here the last computation time taken by this console 
software to solve this problem. So the final and step number seven is the post processing. We want to visualize the data. For that, click on the results. So you right click on the results. So you have three dimensional, two dimensional, and one dimensional plot groups. So once you solve the problem, it automatically gives you the different results. In this case, uh, it provided us a two dimensional stress profile. So if I click here, so you can see we have fixed this end and we apply the load in the minus direction. And this is the stress profile. And if you go here and open this stress, you can see here this is a 2D surface plot and also a deformation. See, clearly see the deformation, then you apply the load in the minus y direction. So this is all about today's video. If you like the video, please go and subscribe the channel. Thank you so much for watching.